Hello and welcome to this Straight Business Talk video, a series of videos where I give you some snippets about business and I interview some business personalities to see how they got started, what problems they face, and what lessons we can actually learn from them. I'm David Amarland, your host, and today we have with us Lilika Vergi. She's the founder and CEO of Alma Bliss. Lilika, welcome. Hello, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. You're most welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background because you come from a very varied background. You have a lot of experience, although you're new as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. your experience in terms of business, however, is not new at all. You've actually had quite a career. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, my career is very diversified, <laughs> talking about my background and what I am doing right now. Uh, my background is mainly on education, uh, foreign languages, and um, vocational training and um, lifelong learning. Uh, I have a master's in lifelong learning and continuous education. I have a bachelor's in uh, English language and literature. Um, I have um, certifications uh, from Google. Um, I know many languages. Um, I have been the founder and managing director of uh, foreign languages schools, uh, colleges, um, vocational centers. Uh, I have uh, also been awarded for the European projects, uh, European programs that uh, I uh, organized and provided to students of vocational training. Um, I have been very active with uh, chambers and uh, many institutions uh, uh, in internationally um, or locally. Um, I, I have been a citizen of the world a little bit because I have also studied in England and I have also lived there and um, in other countries. And now um, all this changed with um, Alma Bliss. <laughs> it's a long list of achievements to say the yeah. least and you've come quite a long way because essentially you've had a lot of um sort of structured environments to work in where there's a, an, a in most cases a pre-existing framework and you launched into a world which is a little bit different with alma bliss tell us a little bit about alma bliss what is it exactly alma bliss is an innovative brand of Demi Fine Jewelry. Uh, it is a, a business which is uh, identified as e-commerce. Totally, completely, right now, at least for the time being. And um, it has to do with total personalization and providing the confidence to women to be themselves and tell their story. That's pretty amazing. Now, Alma Bliss in itself, before we go any further, stands for something, right? Sorry? Alma Bliss in itself, the name of the company. Stands the name for of the company. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, tell us a bit about, about that. Where did the name come from? Well, the name of the company, uh, like the the aspect of the, of the jewelry itself, is totally, totally improvised and created by me, which is a compound word coming from two different languages. Alma stands for the soul in Spanish and Portuguese, and bliss describes blissfulness, blissfulness, of course. Um, so it describes how a woman can feel wearing creating her own earrings okay it is a feeling of absolute happiness and confidence and empowerment and individuality which is an amazing concept in itself right but tell us a little bit about the origin of the idea how did it come about the origin of the idea, like I can think of um, different businesses that uh, were at least um, started existing as a concept, it started during the COVID time when we were when we were stuck 
And well, we lock, needed, locked in our houses, of course. Yes, <laughs> locked in our houses, of course. And we needed to have all our social and professional uh, interactions using video calls. So for a woman, what is very important is to show her identity and um, her professionalism just uh, using the screen. So it was all about her face and what the others could see um, about her. So the concept of Alma Bliss came during the quarantine, thinking that women would like to have something that during those times that they were very difficult and very dark for all of us, they could feel something good about themselves that would be creativity and would be personalization and something clever like creating their own jewels, their own earrings, that they would say things about themselves, they would enhance their um, natural colors, they would enhance their mood, and they could use them throughout the day in different concepts, different colors, um, different combinations. And um, that's how I got this idea. That's to pretty help amazing. women be themselves and tell their story. That's pretty amazing because when we look at a screen, we just see a two-dimensional world and trying to project your individualism through a screen is always very difficult. Yes. Um, do you have a pair of earrings you can demonstrate perhaps? Of course. First of all, I could show you some earrings that they are, um, all of the earrings, I must say, they are demi-fine, which means that they are made of uh, precious metals like sterling silver and gold. Mm -hmm. So you can see that this is uh, gold of uh, 14 carats on sterling silver with semi-precious stones. Okay. These materials make the demi-fine jewelry. Um, this is a, a concept that it's easy for women to create their own uh, personal collection. How, how would it work? Yeah, how, how would so it work? So you can see the results. Mm -hmm. This is a different set of earrings, and this is a new, uh, this is another one. Okay. The way that they work is exactly to start from a stud, which is this. Okay. It is a red garnet, mm -hmm. this particular uh, semi precious stone. Okay. And you can add it inside here, which is another compartment uh, of earrings, huh. and you create this. Whoa. That's so cool. we started from one start, and now we have a second set of earrings. Yes. And if we want to add this uh -huh. part, this piece, yes. putting them together, Mm -hmm. You have this, <laughs> which is amazing. a third set of earrings. So you start just with one stud, and at the same time you have three. Okay. But that's not actually true, because you can use, as I will show you here, for a mm -hmm. different set of earrings. This is amethyst and tanzanite, and it is white gold on sterling silver. Mm -hmm. It is rhodium plated, especially so that we avoid uh, tarnish, because okay. that's what happens with uh, white gold, what, with uh, white metals in, in general. Okay. So here, having a bigger stud of five millimeters, you have another set of earrings huh. these are different colors you can see the colors yeah. are combined to match the natural colors of women right so this That's one could be for women with darker with darker uh, skin with darker yeah. color of skin uh, or with women that prefer yellow with women that they are brunettes this is for women that they are of um, uh, colder, um, uh, cooler, uh, sorry, um, uh, colors of skin, mm -hmm. or of um, eyes or of hair. And there are different combinations that, for example, you have this mm -hmm. yellow, yellow gold. Right. And you can add 
the stat that you prefer. You start oh. always with a stat. This is amethyst. Okay. Um, you can have amethyst. You can also have citrine, which is the yellow. Right. Stone. Uh, you can also have green peridot, mm -hmm. but you can also have it, for example, like this. Okay. Um, you can also have this beautiful aquamarine. That's amazing. And how many combinations could we get from one set, for example? It depends on the combination that you want to create based on your mood, based on your uh, clothes. Um, they are not, they are non-stop. Right. Okay. So that's quite, in, that's quite, combine, that's quite fascinating. Absolutely. Yes. So, yes. You uh, can combine the colors that you want, starting from the start and then all the combinations of the uh, different um, uh, components of the earring. Okay. So. As you set all this up and you had this idea, which started as, as you said, in the, during the pandemic as an idea. Yes. What was the process that you had to put in place to make it a reality? First of all, uh, because I believe in lifelong learning myself, it's not only a matter of studies, but because I am a person that I believe that we need to um, get as more as more education as we can and to um update our knowledge and to uh, move ahead and um, be creative uh, what i needed to do first of all was to study was okay. to study thoroughly um about um the business plan about uh, the trends having to do with earrings, about the um, uh, social et etiquette of different countries because Alma Bliss is a business that addresses different markets. Um, I needed to study, I needed to um, uh, be involved uh, with um, um, designing, to, to speak uh, with um, suppliers, to join to join uh, different um, uh, exhibitions and speak uh, with um, other uh, perhaps also some some um, competitors as well because so you did you did all this yourself right because yes, these are all different skill sets i did it all myself including the site oh wow <laughs> <laughs> because i also did the site on my own uh, the branding, the packaging. Uh, of course, I needed to uh, cooperate with some uh, people that I trust, and they are um, partners like um, my graphic designer that we work together for the um, uh, logo. Um, but I needed to study a lot on my own, and I needed to. And I also something else that it's very important is that I also uh, provided questionnaires to women in different countries about their habits, about their habits as consumers, um, what they prefer as a jewelry, how it makes them feel, how often they, they buy uh, jewelry, what kind of jewelry, what type of jewelry. Um, so I had a, a very good sample of um, potential customers uh, for the future. Uh, that's it quite a load research 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 that's quite a load of work so i'm just thinking as you mentioned all this right if you if we were to talk to give some kind of advice to somebody starting out and trying to sort of replicate your journey if you were to talk to your young to your self before you started all this for for example what kind of advice do you think you could give that would be useful in terms of perhaps providing a shortcut or avoiding some pitfalls Given the fact that at that point um, the budget was restricted and because uh, by learning this is an asset for the business itself rather than outsourcing as much things as you can do that perhaps they can make your next step uh, coming uh, more quickly. Uh, I would say that really what is very important is to do research. Hmm. Um, so 
given the, the circumstances, um, I believe that um, the things as they were done, they were complete and they were um, correct. Because, of course, if you have a bigger budget, then you can do everything uh, at a different pace. Yes. Uh, so always, I, always I, the case. <laughs> yeah, I, I advise people to do research and to do to, to study on their own. And if they have a bigger budget, of course, research and working with the right people makes things easier. Of course. Now, speaking of budgets, because, you know, if you're starting up a business, it really doesn't matter how much available money you have it's never really quite enough yes so and and, and you said you know if you had a bigger budget you would outsource perhaps some of the aspects mm -hmm. which of those aspects would you keep to yourself and wouldn't outsource i believe that when we are uh, entrepreneurs we need to have knowledge about a bit of everything okay I see myself a little bit like a, a Swiss knife, you know, that you can use it for different functions. Okay. Uh, so definitely you need to study things, but I, what I would keep for myself uh, would be the part of designing and doing the financial um, work for the business. Okay. Um, because the designing is something which is basic for your product and the designing also has to do with your branding and the, um, uh, the picture of the, the full picture of the, of the business. And of course, the, the financial part has to do with your costs, with your suppliers, with um, everything that has to do with the function um, in reality. Okay. So that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, how long have you been trading now? How long have you been live? Uh, Alma Bliss has been live for the last uh, almost uh, three months. Okay, which is a very short time, really. It is. In that short time, have you learned any new lessons you can apply or you can share? Yes. Um, you know, in e-commerce, globalization is a challenge. Okay. And this is something that is a lesson that I have learned from because when you want to address a, a wide market, you need to promote it differently to different cultures. You need to have more uh, a, a bigger budget for your promotion, actually. Uh, you need also to know about your cost, your your uh, your costs, and you need to know also about your stock. So the lesson that I have learned is that um, you should go one step at a time, being very patient, being being very persistent, being very uh, logical and reasonable about your costs, about how you want to um, to use the budget that you have in uh, the promotion and um, um, your branding. Um, and it is something that takes time. So I would say just that I have learned to be even more patient than I have yeah. been as a person. Although it is something which is, um, it's very difficult because it takes longer than a physical shop. Right. To, of, to, to, to raise awareness. Okay. And of course, we, we live in times which are challenging in themselves. The markets are changing. The buying public seems to be going through phases and cycles which um, don't quite reflect the past. How much of a challenge has that been for you? How, because you, you, know, you started a business at a time Yes. In, in in commercial history where there's a lot of uncertainty and there are a lot of ups and downs on a, a lot more frequent basis than in the past so how how is it affecting you if it is affecting you and how are you dealing with it it is a challenge but when you are confident about your product and what it serves and what are the feelings that uh, creates to the consumers, to the to the clients, and this feeling of individualization, personalization, 
um, empowerment um, that you create, it is something that overtakes the, 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 the challenge. So right. you need to be sure, you need to be enthusiastic about what you do and to be, and this is something that you can achieve through a, a long and thorough research, as okay. I told you. I mean, nothing should be something that relies on luck. On everything everything yeah. has to do with your personal work. Okay, that's, that's really good, solid advice. What do you think, what do you perceive as your biggest difficulty right now? It is to create brand awareness and to make uh, the potential customers, the audience, the, the target audience, to trust you, to trust you as a brand, to trust the, the quality of what you offer and um, to create a, a, a steady, long lasting relationship with them because right. This is something that has to do with a personal relationship because earrings and jewelry in general, it is a product that, and let me find jewelry, of course, is a product that is a permanent, more expensive uh, product that if you also want to uh, present it as a personalized product, that uh, it um, represents each woman separately. Uh, this is the most difficult part right now. So I want women to understand what Alma Bliss stands for, the products of Alma Bliss, the signature jewels, um, and to make the to make them their own. That's why I am also open to. Um, suggestions. I am open to uh, people um, telling me their ideas, perhaps different designs, perhaps um, uh, other things that I I am not aware right now because you know every woman is different and they have their own taste and they have their own uh, uh, preferences. So I am open to this. This is and this is a, a, a relationship between. Alma Bliss, me as Lilika, and our customers. That we see them as people who trust us and we as, as our friends. In, right. That's what we want to, yes. to to achieve. Okay, that's that's perfect. Um how um now I, I, I presume you're active in social media and you're using that as part of your um, creating awareness for your brand and yes. for your jewelry and, and social media itself is undergoing a massive change right now so how what is your perception of the difficulties which a new entrepreneur like you is facing in this new environment of social media that is still developing yes uh, that's a very in, very very good question um, it is something that every day changes there are so many platforms and each platform addresses different target audiences mm -hmm. with different ages, different uh, lifestyles, different preferences. Uh, it is very interesting and at the same time it is very risky for somebody, especially who is trying to um, create brand awareness about a new product, um, how to uh, come closer to these target audiences and to speak their language. Um, this is really a big challenge. And what I am trying to do is that based on the target audience that I have decided that I want to address from the beginning um, as a perception of, uh, of Alma Bliss, I am trying to speak their language and to approach them in the platforms of social media that they use. Okay. Uh, I mean, that, that's amazing because essentially the way you framed it, the scope of the problem and the solution which you're applying in its essence is not much different to what it was in the early days of social media. 
But at the same time, now we have a faster moving audience. We have a more mature audience in terms of how they use it. They in themselves are more discerning perhaps in how they connect. So getting the message out to them now and making that connection, which you say is vital for trust, trustworthiness, brand awareness is harder. Yes. How, and, 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 and it's fascinating that you're actually learning in real time how to address this. Um, how do you think a new brand like yours um, would make the best possible use of social media today? Theoretically. Um, I think I think that by explaining exactly what you sell and what problems it solves. Okay. Uh, and you need to be clear about this, and you need to be um, dealing with this directly. Um, as we see, for example, the videos on TikTok, they are short videos that they present products and how you use them. So I think that right now, because the, the, the pace of our life and um, all this information that we get from social media is very, very quick, we just need to be quick and direct. Um, and perhaps we need to be aggressive towards the, the, the potential customers about what we do, what, we, what it serves, and how their life can be easier and or better or um, happier mm -hmm. choosing this particular product. Absolutely, and you mentioned TikTok, and I'm smiling now because essentially TikTok itself is undergoing quite a few challenges. Um, very recently, the American government banned it across the entire United States, or rather, they passed a law which is going to make to to put a, to place a ban on, on TikTok across the US, which is fascinating, really, because it's you know it's the first time that a democratic government of that size is actually banning an application which um, is used by so many people to connect with their audiences. So we're going to see how this is going to play out because it's it, you know it's fascinating in terms of the dynamic that it actually creates, and of course this adds to the challenges of business people, right? Because your audience is global. Yes. And and you know you will have probably put in time and effort to reach um, an audience that is U.S. centric to some extent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. I dare, I dare to say that this is about politics. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it is always about politics, right? A lot of things are uh, unfortunate and these days. We need, and, and we need to adjust. Uh, all of us. I mean, the businesses need to adjust to the politics every time, wherever we are. And this is a, a lot of hard work, and this this is a huge challenge every time. This is an additional challenge, you're quite right. And I think in terms of what it represents as a challenge to businesses, it's 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 relatively new, right? We didn't have that, you know, maybe eight years ago. Yes. It was not quite there. Ten years ago, it certainly wasn't. Okay, so this is part of the new century. Um, what do you think, talking speaking of challenges, what do you think your biggest challenge will be moving forward this year? Yes, my biggest challenge will be, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the brand awareness and the trust that I can uh, achieve from the customers to Alma Bliss. Um, this is the target for this year, for 2024. And then we have more targets. Every okay. year we can add more. <laughs> All right, and here's a trick a trick question because I, I see this across businesses of different sizes. We used to think that, you know, when you had a startup, you started out standard, right, with a five-year plan. So that was your basis. And, and these days I see mature businesses that actually don't have even a one-year plan because things are changing so quickly. How 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 do you deal with that? I think that we should have some stability in the way that we organize uh, the function of the business. Um, because exactly things are um, not very stable. I mean, this is what, what you said about TikTok, it changes many things about the social media marketing. Uh, but we need to have a stability in the way that we have organized the function and the um, 
uh, expectations that we have. Um, and the way that I deal with this is to make small steps at a time, like what I told you. I want to be very realistic about each particular year. And uh, the most important for me is to keep this high quality of uh, the products that we provide, um, the customer service that we provide, listening to our uh, customers and um, uh, trying to help them and serve them the most, the most possible way so that exactly they trust us and they start with this particular collection that I just showed you. But in the future, there will be more collections so that they will be able to combine uh, parts of the earrings that they will already have with something else. So it is a, a, a non-stop and an endless um, production. And uh, as I said, I, we want a relationship hmm. with Absolutely. personal relationship with our customers. So um, that's how we, we think and we organize uh, the function of Alma Bliss and what we and the expectations that we have. Right, that's brilliant. Okay, so we're getting near the end now. So I am going to ask you about your um, how, your vision in terms of how do you see things developing? And I, I know we just went through quite an extensive, extensive discussion about uncertainty, about mm -hmm. fluidity, about challenges, and they are going to be there for some time. However, yes. as an entrepreneur, you must have a kind of vision which drives you forward. And if we were to take a leap forward now, and go five years in the future, what do you see? Where do you see Alma Bliss being? I told you that um, the focus is women, to make women feel that they are unique, that they can tell their story in their own personal way, that they feel empowered, that they are independent, that they are strong, and we want to expand this to more countries. Right now, uh, our market is the countries of the EU, the United Kingdom, and the US. So within the next five years, we ideally wish to expand to uh, the United Arab Emirates, to Qatar, um, to countries that uh, women also want to tell their story. They want to personalize their jewelry. Uh, it's a different um, approach because the the, the, the the etiquette, the social etiquette is different, the culture is different. So this is a very interesting challenge for me because the design, the products, the, the, the material that will be used um, may be a bit different from what Alma Bliss um, is about right now. So okay. that's what we organize and we wish for the future in, in five years. Brilliant. Okay. And as we're wrapping up. And of, course, I... and of course, people to know what Alma Bliss stands for. They will hear Alma Bliss and they will know what it is exactly. Absolutely. Okay. And one final question. Uh, a lot of our audience are going to be people who are either starting their own business or are thinking about starting their own business. Yes. If they were to prioritize one thing in their planning from your own direct experience, what would that thing be? Do research, study on your own, learn, talk with uh, people, do networking, talk with suppliers, learn what you want to do as a, as a business, learn exactly the product that you want or the service that you want to offer, but do research, Brilliant. learn everything on your own. This is the biggest asset for any business. That's fantastic. Where can we find you? Where can the audience find you? Where can they find Alma Bliss? You can find us on the internet on the site almabliss.com and we as i said that we uh, right now we send uh, our uh, wonderful jewels to the eu to the uk and to the us and we are working on expanding to more countries okay and you have a social a social presence i'm going social to link I'm of going course. to link to it in the resource yes. box on YouTube. Yes. So you guys out there watching this, if you check out the resource box on YouTube, you'll be able to find Alma Bliss uh, across the social web and certainly their website, 
directly. Lika Vergi, thank you very much for your uh, forthcoming uh, suggestions and being so open to this. Take care and good luck. David Almerland, it has been a great pleasure. Thank you again. Thank you.